Okay, so um, we're going to start talking about properties of specific quadrilaterals now. Okay, just keep in mind that quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Come on. Okay, and the interior angle sum is always going to be 360 degrees. Okay, so all four of those interior angles will add up to 360 degrees. Okay, the first specific quadrilateral, um, by definition, is a it's a, a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, that is where we get our parallelogram. Okay, now other properties that a parallelogram has, its opposite sides. are congruent, okay? So we've got these two congruent here. Those two shorter sides are congruent. Okay, another one. Opposite angles are congruent, okay? So this obtuse angle on the top left and the obtuse angle on the bottom right are congruent. And then our two acute angles are congruent. Okay. Another one is consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, which remember means that we've got two angles that add to equal 180 degrees. All right. Um, and so consecutive means two angles that are right next to each other connected by a side. Okay, so this obtuse angle here, we'll call it A, and this acute angle B, those are supplementary. Okay, and last but not least, the diagonals. bisect each other. All right, and remember to bisect means to cut in half or into two congruent parts. Okay, now these next three that we're going to talk about are also parallelograms, so they still have all it's still another quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides, and it still has all four of these properties that we wrote down, okay? Um, but they just have a few additional properties that make them a little, a little more special, a little more specific, I guess, okay? Um, a rhombus is a... Um, it's an equilateral quadrilateral or an equilateral para parallelogram. And equilateral means that all four sides are congruent. Okay, so we still have all of the properties of a parallelogram. Okay, opposite sides and angles are still congruent, consecutive angles are still supplementary, and the diagonals still bisect each other. But a rhombus, we also have that the diagonals are perpendicular, okay, which means they intersect to form a right angle. 
And then we also know that the diagonals bisect opposite angles. Okay, and so what that means here, uh, let's just, for instance, if I, nope, didn't want to do that. Okay. If I am going to draw one diagonal in, I'll draw it in blue, okay. This diagonal that goes from this vertex to this vertex, okay, that diagonal cuts these two angles in half, okay, and then the same goes for this diagonal to this diagonal, or I'm sorry, that vertex to the opposite vertex. These two angles now are congruent, okay. Um, next, we've got a rectangle. And a rectangle is an equiangular parallelogram. Okay, and equiangular means that all four angles are congruent. And 360 divided by 4 is 90. So that's why that's where we get the 90 degree angles. Okay. Um, in a rectangle, an additional property is that the diagonals are congruent. Okay. So if I Go ahead and again, I'll do it in blue here. I'm gonna draw this diagonal and this diagonal. Those segments are congruent. Okay, and last but not least is a square. Okay, maybe if I can make this bigger. And a square, I think I said it in class on Tuesday and Wednesday, is a regular, we'll say regular quadrilateral or regular parallelogram, either one. Okay, and to be regular means that all of the sides are congruent and all of the angles are congruent. Okay, now um, a square is, is special because it not only has the properties of the parallelogram, just like rhombus and rectangle do, but it also has the properties, the additional properties of a rhombus and the additional properties that a rectangle has. Okay, so its diagonals are still congruent, just like a rectangles. Its diagonals are perpendicular, just like a rhombus, okay? So keep that in mind as we move forward.